I guess, talk about that challenge and maybe can you make adjustments coming in tonight to maybe improve your chances of success? Yeah, I mean, Musgrove, um, heck of a competitor. I, I got to work out with him um, three, four off seasons ago, so I kind of know how the guy ticks. Um, just a, yeah, a true competitor. So we know he's going to bring it tonight. Um, the stuff speaks for itself, right? Like he was within the Cy Young conversation, I know, for the bulk of the first half. Um, ended super well. We all saw what he did against the Mets and against the Dodgers. So we know he can take down a lineup. We had some good success against him in San Diego. Um, I, I've said this, you know, multiple times throughout this playoff run, but we kept him in the strike zone then. I don't know how many walks there were, um, but multiple walks, not too many strikeouts. And that's, you know, where this guy lives. He gets a lot of chase, does a lot of strike the ball. So, um, yeah, we'll have to make adjustments. Um, we'll, you know, we'll obviously use the information that we have and can gather from the last couple of starts against two pretty good offenses. Um, but getting this guy in the strike zone with the, the couple of elite breaking balls that he has is going to be key tonight. Mike, uh, here on the right. Hey, Reese. Um, after game one, uh, Zach Wheeler said the postseason has felt like a, a blur to him. Just wondering how it's felt to you, and have you tried to sort of take a moment and make sure you're taking it all in and, and not miss anything? Yeah, definitely a blur. Uh, I'll agree with Wheels there, um, especially as a you know a first timer um, being in the postseason. It all happens fast, right? We're as soon as the game's over, it's on to the next. There's travel back and forth. Um, there's obviously tons of information. A lot of stuff goes on off the field uh, before the games and post games. So, um, but that's what makes it special, I think. It, it's, it's definitely different than the 162 in the regular season. Um, in terms of you know trying to take it all in, of course, um, this, is what, this is why we play. This is what we dream of as competitors. Um, and as athletes, um, sometimes during the game, not really. Obviously, there's a lot of focus on whatever's going on on the field. Um, but post game, pre game, just kind of looking up into the stands. Obviously, here is a little bit more special on the road, just getting to see the sea of red. Um, but I think we also have that the the, the blinders on, right? Um, and that's something that I think helps us keep focused and um, always, you know, trying to stay ready for the next thing that's coming. Tyler, far left. Reese, I want to ask you about um, JT Real Muto. You played against him when he was with the Marlins. Um, what what stood out to you about him? What impressed you about him as an opponent? And what did you learn? At, what have you learned as a teammate about what makes him so good? Yeah, so 17 and 18 played against him um, when he was a Marlin. First and foremost, just the sheer athleticism. Um, you know, this guy does things on the baseball field that not a lot of players can do, let alone a lot of catchers. And so that, that's that's first and foremost. Um, as I've gotten to know him and be around him as, as a teammate, just the way that he goes about preparing. Um, you know, he's an offensive player, but also has a lot of responsibility with the pitchers and, and game planning for, for the, other, um, the other team. And, you know, it starts for him at you know, 1 o'clock, 1.30 in the afternoon, just game planning with these guys, having conversations, um, you know, pouring belief into whatever their game plan is tonight. That type of thing is kind of what I've noticed. It just makes him a great teammate also. You, you couple the athleticism and the outstanding ball player that he is as a catcher, um, and then getting to know the teammate behind that is, has been something special for, for all, a lot of us, but specifically me. John, down here in front. Reese, I believe it's 16 of 18 on the road. And first of all, how good does it feel to be back home for three? And what were the pros and cons of being on the road during this run? And also maybe any extra bonding with the team getting closer? Yeah, sure. 20, you know, 20 straight days on the road, um, then just home for what felt like a blink and right back on the road. Um, yeah, we're around each other for, you know, 14 hours a day, 12, 14 hours a day for seven months straight. Um, and then you couple that, you kind of take a lot of the families out when we go on the road. We have to spend time with each other. Um, but that's a good thing. That's where that chemistry that's talked about is built. Um, that's where that trust is built. And when you can trust the guy you know, next to you on the field or behind you in a lineup, um, 
it it makes the the downs last a little longer and makes or a little shorter and the the highs last a little longer um but there's nothing like playing at home especially you know we got a little bit of a taste of it last weekend um we've been talking about it really ever since and we feel like we have an advantage here because of the way that the crowd and the energy was last weekend um we're, we're pretty confident coming into this weekend jesse back left Re similar question about real muto but with with schwarber um you know he's been on a lot of playoff teams now is that a coincidence or does he bring something to the table that's a little unique yeah i don't think that's an accident uh you know he won when he was in college also um as soon as he got into the you know the big leagues was with the cubs making runs and winning um the red sox last year so he's done it in a lot of different places and when that usually happens that tends to not be an accident um, some guys just have that knack they know what it takes to win they know how to bring guys together which i think has probably been some of the most important stuff that he's done in a phillies uniform obviously the 46 home runs and you know hitting lead off and all of the statistics speak for themselves but um, just the way that he brings a multitude of different type of people together you know, to chase one common goal is something that I think should be talked about more and probably will be talked about a lot when, you know, we talk about this group. Lauren on the right side. Reese, you touched on the home environment. Um, I obviously wasn't here, but I heard about the decibel levels and how loud it was for the fans and for the reporters. What was it like for you as a player and how does this compare to other environments you've played in? Yeah, first of all, I'm excited for you. Um, I hope you I hope you brought some earplugs. It'll be loud. It was loud. Um, the thing that I noticed the most was literally immediately stepping out into the dugout before introductions even started, um, and then just the the constant how constant people were cheering or yelling or um, clapping, standing up. It didn't seem like there was a point during the game where everybody was sitting down. Um, just portions of some of the stadium always standing up, cheering, clapping. So when you have that constant noise, that constant cheer behind you, that constant energy, um, obviously makes it a lot easier to play for us. But it makes you know the the opposing team their their minds are a little more clouded. I think having you know some experience with that playing on the road and some of these atmospheres that we've played in. Um, so should be a lot of fun. I'm excited to see what they, the crowd, the fans um, have in store for us tonight. But I I'm sure it's going to be um, more than it was last weekend, given the circumstance. Jake, all the way back left. Um, you talked a little bit about how the energy of the postseason is different than the regular season. And for you, this is your first postseason run. I'm curious about the gameplay on the field. Have you noticed any differences in how the games are managed, the at-bats that you're taking, uh, whether the way bullpens are being used, and how that has you know, struck you as someone who is going through this for the first time? Yeah, I mean, definitely different, right? Like, um, some of the schedule allows managers to do different things with some staffs um, and, and bullpen pieces. You kind of seem to see the same three to four to five guys um, you know, in the game. Most of these games are close, and um, w when that's the case, you, you use your guys to because you want to continue to have a chance. Um, base runners are way more coveted in in these games, and as soon as you get a guy on, either offensively, you're like, okay, here we go. This is this is going to be one of the few chances we have. Um, or, you know, on the other side, defensively, it's like, okay, we got a guy on here. We need to make sure that we're playing um, clean baseball here. Um, you can feel the intensity, just click up a little bit, just I think mostly from the crowd. Um, but, you know, that's the type of thing that I think is the biggest difference between now and the regular season is um, hit by pitch, a walk, just getting a guy on is uh, you can feel just the kind of the, the energy boost um, and the morale boost in the dugout because we got a chance to score and those come few and far between. Hannah? You talk about sort of what's different about playing in the postseason, but then also having to put those blinders on, focus on the moment in the game. Is that something you've had to learn to do over the course of this experience the first time in the postseason? Is it something guys like Schwarber who have been there before can tell you about or sort of how do you learn to, to balance those things? 
I think both. Um, you, you, it would be smart of us to lean on the guys with experience, right? Guys that have done this before, guys that have had success in these types of situations, which we have a lot of them. Um, yeah, so leaning on those guys is huge. There's a there's a fine line between the blinders and trying to keep it as similar to the regular season as possible, right? Trying not to change too much. Um, and that's something that Schwarbs has really talked about a lot as well. Um, but I also think, you know, just being within the group that we have um, makes it a little bit easier to do that. We're just getting lost within the processes before the game, trying to be as prepared as we can, um, and then kind of letting the talent go speak for itself like we know that we have. Yeah, far left. Reese, uh, for those that may not know Ranger Suarez very well, what should we expect to see from him tonight? And what's he like behind closed doors? <laughs> um, well, Ranger's going to work fast. He's going to get a lot of soft contact because that's what he does. Um, he's probably going to make three or four plays that will maybe leave you scratching your head. Um, just Mr. Cool out there, right? Cool, calm, and collected. Doesn't seem like the moment um, gets to him very much. And that's pretty much exactly who he is behind closed doors. Um, you know, we call him Mr. Suave. Um, just as smooth as it can get. Always having a good time. Always laughing. Um, as soon as he gets on the mound, obviously, he turns that intensity up. But never seems like he's going too fast. And that's something that I think is uh, what makes him pretty special.